All right, so number four, uh, we, we see we have three distinct pieces here. All right, so we have to account for each one of those. I, I think personally it's a good idea. Uh, you don't have to write it down, but you should at least consider what these functions are called because that's going to be easier to identify the appropriate parent function and then from there appro the appropriate equation. So this is a line. That's easy enough. This one's absolute. And this is a parabola. All right. So when it comes to developing my piecewise function, I need three pieces. So f of x is going to be equal to my three components. All right. I need the equation for each one of them. All right. So I'll start off with a line. What is the equation of that line? y equals negative 5. All right, but we're just going to put in the negative 5. If, now we state the conditions. Well, it has an arrow, so it goes all the way to negative infinity, but then it terminates where? Negative 4. Does it ever get to negative 4? No. no. So what can I say in the form of an inequality? X is less than negative 4. All right. Now the next piece is an absolute value function. First thing I have to consider is what the slope would be. All right, we know it's upward facing, so that's easy enough. What's the slope of this? Up one over two. Up one over two. All right. So the slope is one half. Now, is there any kind of shifting going on? No. no. So it's still at zero zero, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just a stretch. Uh, in this case, a shrink of our parent function, the a uh, function, new word, function, absolute value of x. <laughs> now where does this one live? Negative four and negative four. Negative four and four, does it ever get to either of those? No, no. no. so between negative four and four. All right, the last piece is a shifted parabola. It's definitely shifted because its vertex for the parent function should be at the origin, but it's not. All right. Now, in terms of the a value, the leading coefficient, well, we have to make a determination of whether or not it has the same shape as the parent function or whether it's a wider or skinnier version of it. This one looks like it's the exact same shape, so I'm not really worried about the a value. But really, all you're doing, whenever you're evaluating a curved function and its deviation from the parent function, is you're just looking for the one-box relationship. All right. So the slope for one unit deviation from the vertex. That's going to tell you what your A value is. All right, so what would be the slope here? One. All right, so the slope over that interval is equal to one. So we're satisfied that this is the same as a, uh, a parent function parabola. All right. So that would be the same for an absolute value function, and normally it would be a slope of one over that first box, but it would be the same throughout. The difference between a parabola and an absolute value function is that it changes after that first box. All right. So I know that the A value is one, and bear in mind that all these functions have the same structure to their standard form. So a parabola has the form of A times X minus H squared plus K. So I know my A value is 1. I have a horizontal shift of 5, but no vertical shift. So what should my equation be? This is the part where you speak. So the A value is 1, horizontal shift is 5, and no vertical shift. So what's my equation? Y equals x minus 5 squared, exactly. So that's the last piece if what? Greater than or equal to 4. All right, because we have a solid point at 4. So we can actually get to that location, but then we go on from there. And this is definitely a little bit trickier than it was for just linear functions. But it all comes down to your understanding and knowledge of these parent functions. If you can, if you can commit this to memory, 
this, this is not hard, all right? Which is why I recommended you try 11 and 12 first because then you get a, a sense of the procedure of actually creating the graphs before you start actually trying to come up with the equation. All right, try your best. We'll go over it tomorrow. Definitely. Whether it's linear functions or otherwise, you still want to go a piece at a time and, and talk about two things. The equation of the function for that particular piece and also the domain. Right, so this one is a little, a little bit easier than that one because it's pretty obvious that what we're looking at is the horizontal line. Right, that line has an equation of what? Six. Y equals six. All right. So whether you want to indicate the domain now or later is up to you, but you should have it in mind that it's going from negative infinity to a negative four. All right. And that'll work its way into the piece wise later on. Then you want to look at this one and try to identify what parent function it, it most closely resembles. All right, there aren't any trick questions here because, I mean, in theory there could be, because if you look at this, you might say, well, how do I know that's a square root function and not just half of a cube root function? All right, I'm not trying to trick you. That's a square root function. All right, so what we're looking at in terms of the parent function would be an x-intercept at the origin. This one has an x-intercept that's displaced by two units. All right, so that's the key to everything here. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to determining the stretch or shrink, really all you need to do is evaluate the slope of a single box deviation away from your origin point, all right, the point that would be at the origin if the graph were not displaced, all right? So the rise, or rise over run, in this case, would be one over one, which is one. So that slope of the single box would be one, which means that it corresponds to the slope of a single box when you're dealing with the parent function for the square root, all right? So basically, you want to take a look at what the parent function would look like and evaluate the slope of a single box and compare it, and that'll give you a sense of what the scale factor is, right? Because if the slope of a single box is like four, then you would know that it's a stretch, right? Then if we were going in the opposite direction, you would know to negate it, right? But we have what we need now because every one of these functions, I'll just write it off on the top here, they have a standard form. Now, let's say that the parent function is f of x. The standard form for any function is going to be y equals a times f of x minus h plus k. All right. That, that looks complicated, but really all it's saying is this piece here depends on what type of function it is. So if it were a parabola, it would be x minus h squared. If it's a square root, it would be the square root of x minus h. If it's absolute value, it's the absolute value of x minus h. A cubic function, x minus h cubed. All right? But it has the same structure, a, h, and k. Identify those values and you have your standard form. All right, so I know that I'm dealing with a cube root function in this case, so I could define my equation pretty easily. It's going to be y equals 1, I'm not going to write the 1, times x minus negative 2, so x plus 2, yeah. Is there a vertical shift? No. No. All right, it's staying put. It starts... The parent function starts on the x-axis, so, and so does this graph, so there's no shift involved. So when I'm defining my piecewise, I would say f of x, tend to overuse that f of x. The first piece is the linear function, 6. We just say the 6, not y equals. If x is less than or equal to negative 4, perfecto. And then the second piece, we have a function, the square root of x plus 2, if x 
greater than or equal to negative 2. All right? So in the second problem, we'll see. That first piece, what, what function does that most closely resemble? The cubic, right? So it seems to be shifted over three units. Now, what would be the slope of a single box? One, right? So it's, it's the parent function shifted. There's no stretch or strain. All right? So that's going to be pretty easy because all I have to do is say that it's a cubic model with an A value of 1. What's going in the parentheses? X plus 3. Yep. If, well, it goes all the way out to negative infinity, where does it terminate? Negative 2. So what would I write as an um, inequality? X is less than negative 2, less than because it's an open circle. Now, the other piece is a line. All right? That one, we just need two pieces of information. The slope. No funky scale here. What's my slope? 1. What's my y-intercept? Negative 3. So what's my equation? X minus 3. X minus 3 if... And there it is. Wait, did you just? Maybe part of it comes down to your knowledge of parent functions. Because some of it's just a linear function idea. Okay. So, yeah, number four had an absolute value function. Those are instantly recognizable. Right. But the linear functions, you know, sometimes you have to do a little work. But in most cases, you can kind of eyeball it and see what the slope and y-intercept are. Right. So in the case of that first piece, let me make my marker a little thicker here. That first piece has a slope of what? One. Positive one? Negative one. All right. And what would the y-intercept be if it could get to the y-axis? Negative three. Negative three. All right. Now... The third piece, we'll ignore the, the middle piece for a sec. That third piece has a slope of what? Negative one. Negative one again. If it could get to the y-axis, its y-intercept would be? Three. Positive three. All right, so we have enough to determine those equations. What we need now is to determine the equation of that inner function. And again, just knowing what that resembles is, is the important piece. All right, the important concept. All right, so I'll draw the parent function. What is that the parent function of? Or what is that, what is that parent function called? F of x equals radical x. Somebody, like, remember that, I think, kind of, like, it's a radical, so it's, like, half the parabola, kind of. <laughs> that's, that's good stuff. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, bye. So, for the first piece, my equation would be what? Negative x minus Negative x minus 3. All right. The domain, also very important. So, if, where does this function live? Negative 4, so x is, x is less than negative 4. All right, so it's going to the left of negative 4, but it's never actually getting there. So we don't have an equal sign for our inequality. The middle piece is a transformed radical function. All right, you got to think about what the transformation would be. Is there a vertical shift? 
Did it did it go up from the x axis? Yeah. yeah. No, it went. No, it just went to the left. Ver no vertical shift. Is there a stretch? Uh, uh, -uh. Mm -hmm. No. The 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 first unit slope is still one, just like the parent function's first unit slope is one. All right. So we're not worried about the a value or the k value. The only thing that changes is the h value. So my actual function should be the square root of what? X plus two. And where does this one live? Where does it start? Wait, isn't it X plus three? Yeah, oh, yeah. I thought I heard two. I'm sorry. Where does this one live? Negative three to positive two, x in the middle, what are my inequalities? And then less than, all right. Then the last piece, what's my function? Negative x plus three, if, perfecto. You, you'd like me to do. So, absolute value of x plus one. Now, it's a big issue moving forward. Like, when you sit down to take the Regents exam, and you look up in the gym, and you look around, and there's not a single math teacher in sight. Okay? You're looking for me, you're looking for anybody that you might recognize as a math teacher. You can't find any of us. You're not allowed to be there. Okay? What's going to happen when you raise your hand and say, hey, um, where, how do I get the absolute value on my calculator? What do you think, what do you think the gym teacher is going to say? I don't know. Yeah, pretty much. That's almost exactly how they're going to say Out the window. It. Oh, they might say that. Actually, the gym teacher is pretty solid on their math <laughs> calculator skills. So, but yeah, they're, they're not going to be able to tell you pretty much anything. They're definitely not going to be able to tell you too much about the calculator. Right, so, yeah, I, the reason I mention it is because during a few assessments recently, the hand's gone up and it's like, how do I, how do I get this again? I mean, I'm, I don't really have too much of a problem giving you that information. The state has an enormous problem giving you that information. Right, it's not allowed, right? So at some point, you need to be able to find this stuff on your calculator by yourself. Right? Alpha window. Uh, you know, honestly, alpha something. Alpha is something in the top row, right? Odds are, if you're looking for something, it's, it's there. Hit alpha and then just start clicking keys. Once you find the one you like, go for it, all right? So if I want to put this in my calculator, I can, but I can also take advantage of the fact that I know what the, the parent function itself looks like, and all this is is a vertical shift of one unit, all right? So vertical shift of one unit And this one is a vertical shift of four units. All right, so, I mean, I, I have a lot of experience with this, so it's kind of an unfair advantage. So I could, I could plot this with, with great ease, you know, but you, you're still getting used to it, so you might go to the calculator. Absolute value of x shouldn't be too bad. Right. That, that should be something that you probably know about. So the origin is where the turning point is for, for the parent function ordinarily. We're doing a vertical shift of one. And nothing else is changing. So boop, boop. I got pretty much everything I need for that. Now I stopped it at positive three because that's what the domain told me to do. All right, so I don't want to lose sight of that. All right, very important. Uh, something else that's very important, because it's going to come up for the second piece. When you make an open circle, don't, don't make the cute little teensy tiny open circles. Make it fairly large, because I can't see. 
And so some of you make like these really adorable looking teensy tiny little circles. They're, they're like perfect circles. The problem is I can't tell if they're filled in or not because they're so small that they're right on the intersection. And with my terrible vision, which is borderline legally blind, like I, I look at it like, I, 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 I don't know. So really, really make it obvious that it's an open circle. All right, so you make it a jumbo open circle. Anyway, for this, I, again, I know what the radical function looks like. You just rip the bend in there. <coughs> but if I plug in a three, I'm going to get a decimal. So it's all well and good that I know what this function looks like. The problem is that the numbers aren't all nice. So for this one, I definitely want to kick over to the calculator. Yeah, I had to get a new part. I couldn't get the new part I wanted, which was a new TV. <laughs> so I got the second best thing, which is a new All right, so this one's going to start off at three. Now, it's not convenient because it's a decimal value. But so at approximately 3 comma 5.7 ish, I'm going to draw an open circle. One, two, three, four, five point seven ish. Okay, looks good. And then I'm gonna grab whatever clean points I could find after that. Four six. See if I can find another clean one or relatively clean one. Nine seven. All right, because I don't want to. I don't want to make a living out of plotting decimal values here. Right. Another benefit of knowing what the parent function looks like is that it allows you to plot less points and still come up with the right figure. Right. If you know what a radical function looks like, you can come up with the correct shape and not have to plot a bunch of little points everywhere. Now, I knew that this was supposed to be a line. The problem is I can't draw a straight line to save my life. So I plot all the points so that I get full credit. Because you could have the world's shakiest line on the Regents exam as long as the points are plotted correctly. All right. So, and that's the same idea for any kind of curve. All right. They're not they're not grading your steady handedness. All right. All right. So, is there one that you wanted me to look at? Eight. Oh yeah! Look at that baby. That's a good looking problem right there. And again, you can do it by the calculator or you can do it based on your knowledge of parent functions. All right. The issue is when you have a restriction to your domain, sometimes you want to get the, the calculator involved just as a support. All right. I'm going to tackle the middle piece first because we're very familiar with absolute value functions. I have a quick question. Sure. Will the exit ticket be on this or will it be on my It's going to be on this stuff. Okay, yeah. All right. So... This is a shrink factor of one half. All right, shrink factor of one half, right? There's no shifting whatsoever. So it's still gonna be at the origin. Instead of having a slope of one, it's gonna have a slope of one half. All right, so up one over two rather than up one over one. And we're only going out as far as positive 4 and negative 4. Okay. Now, the first piece, that, that I think we'll get the calculator involved in that because there, there's going to be some pretty big numbers potentially. Although we could do some calculations, but let's take a look at the last one. Because we also know what a parabola looks like. What's going on with this parabola? This it is a uh, scope, a, 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 uh, uh, yeah. 
quadratic. It sure is. Yes. All right. Now, is it shifted in any way? Yes. It is shifted right five points. Shifted right five units. All right, so it's your ordinary parabola that's shifted right five units. So its vertex should be on the x-axis five units to the right. All right. Now, it can go as low as four. So I can go back a point. I can continue on. Whether you get these points from your knowledge or from the calculator, it's entirely your business. But I do know for the parent function, the parabola, the heights are always 149. It's always that 149 relationship. And that's impacted only by the A value. So if the A value was 2, then I would double the 149. If it was 1 half, I would cut the 149 in half. All right, so you, you get used to that over time, bless you, because you're going to be dealing with parabolas for the rest of your natural life, mathematically. Yeah. The, the, the one box slope is one. After right. that, because it's a parabola, it changes. Okay. All right. Would it be wrong if you like, left it as one? Like, if you left it as one, yeah. Then you would If you did, yeah, because then it would become linear. Okay. All right. The last piece we go to the calculator for, just because, again, the numbers can get a little crazy when you're dealing with cubes. You, you know generally what a cubic function looks like. That doesn't mean you want to actually have to graph it by hand. So this one maxes out at 4. I'm oh, sorry, negative 4. Otherwise, it really would have been a problem. So in those circumstances, what I do is I organize my table so that the very last x value is the negative 4. And then I just plot reasonable values. So negative 4, 1 with a closed circle. Then we have negative five, zero, negative six, negative one. All right, now this was only a horizontal shift. So the point, the transition point, should be still on the x-axis. So that, that middle part of the cubic function should still be on the x-axis. So we, we have an idea of what it's centered around. All right, so that should give us an idea of the shape. But I could still get negative 7, negative 8 in there. And that would tell me to draw it like this. All right. Now, again, you can actually look at the graph if you forget what these parent functions look like. I mean, memorization is, is wonderful, but if you... You go in to take a test and you're like, I, I don't remember any of these parent functions. Okay, type it in. And look at the picture. That's what the parent function looks like. All right, so the calculator can be a resource in that regard also. I, don't, I forgot what a cube root function looks like. Look at the picture, parent function of a cube root. That's what it looks like. All right, so you just type it right in and call it a day. All right. So, Use your calculator, that's the, that's the moral of the story.